Let's talk about the best way to change background colors. So I've got my Photoshop document open. I just brought in a simple player cutout on a background. We're using Zeppelin Ronig of the Seattle Cascades. So I thought it'd be appropriate to use the Space Needle. Let's say we don't want to use this full color photo in the background. We want to make it maybe more team colored or set it to black and white. What we're going to be doing today is working with gradient maps. And if you go down here to our adjustment layers, go ahead and click that and go up to gradient map. And what gradient maps do is it sets all of the dark colors to a certain color and then all the lighter colors to another color. At least that's what it does in its most basic form. You can add multiple stops on this gradient map bar, but right now it's basically setting all of the dark tones to white, all of the light tones are black. So if you flipped it, you would see a more traditional black and white with the dark tones black and the white tones as white. And the image, you'll see the color changes as you adjust these sliders towards each other, you'll get more stark contrasts. So this is my favorite way in Photoshop to make anything black and white, not just backgrounds. But if you take your black to white gradient map, you should have a preset up under the basics tab and you can just click black to white. Let's add three more stops here and we're gonna set them at the 25 location, the 50 location, and the 75 location. You can just do that by clicking each tab and then setting the location number. Now for the 25 one, we're gonna set this color to a 25% black. For the 50% location, we're gonna set that to a 50% gray. And then this one, we're gonna type in 75 to this black value in the HSB part of the color selector. So you should save this preset once you have like a black to white with these three middle gray options. This is really the best way to change anything to black and white because you can maneuver these dials to add contrast or reduce contrast in the image. Let's say we wanted it more white. You can bring all of these things over to the left and maybe you don't want any black in the design at all. So you want the darkest shade to be this dark gray. You can just like drag that slider off of the gradient map, continue moving these things. Maybe we drag one more off and we just want this very light, you know, white to gray gradient going through our background. So that's one option to change the background color to this like faded black and white look. If we wanted to go the opposite route, we can make it super dark. So I'm gonna reactivate my preset that I have here saved and I'm gonna take off the white slider, I'm gonna click and drag off this lighter gray, and then let's just use these three darker tones. And just by dragging these sliders around, you can get this pretty cool dark background. Now if we wanna get away from black and white, let's reopen the gradient map. Let's pick one of the Seattle team colors. So let's use this dark blue. And we'll just make this a dark blue to the lighter blue. Gradient. So this is a more team colored background and then kind of within the team color realm You can bring these in a little bit and add add a black and a white to each end and That'll just allow you to Again fine-tune The color a little bit more but have some brightness to the image or if you didn't want any brightness to the image maybe you take off the white and you want it to be like mostly dark and like a dark blue that has some black tones in it as well. So really the sky is the limit with the gradient editor of the gradient map. I use this all the time for pretty much every design I make. Again, even with just simple black and white things, I'm gonna use the gradient map. It just gives me more control over exactly how black and white I want a certain image to be. And if you do have some player cutout or design element going over a background, what you can do is take that gradient map and make it affect the player as well, but lower the opacity so it's not the full effect. So let's open up our gradient editor and let's just make it a dark blue, blue and white gradient. And we'll move these over a little bit. And then if you kind of want the player to have the same bluish tone that the background has, you can duplicate this gradient map layer by holding Command and hitting J, 
and then drag it on top of the player. And now if we just want this layer affecting the layer below it, we can clip it to the layer below it by creating a clipping mask. So you can hold option and hover in the space between the layers and then click. So now we have this gradient affecting our player cutout and let's just lower this down to like, you know, 20 to 30% is typically enough. So we get the idea that he is like somewhat blue because he's in this blue scene. And you can do the same thing for a black and white gradient map too. So let's delete this, open up our background gradient map and let's go back to one of our presets here. So let's do like a pretty light white gray one here. And then let's take the same thing Again, Command J, bring it above our player cutout, clip it by holding Option and clicking on the space between layers, and then we'll lower this opacity to 20. So you'll see it, it kind of like gives him this fade and it also desaturates his colors a little bit. I'm a big proponent of gradient maps. You will see me use them in a lot of videos. I highly recommend you play with them, get used to them, and start using them in your sports designs.